Welcome to Tests of Secondary Hemostasis. In this video, we discuss the thrombin and reptilase time. We have the following take-home points. Both the thrombin and reptilase time measure the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. A prolonged thrombin time with normal reptilase time suggests heparin is present in the sample. When both thrombin and reptilase times are prolonged, the disorder of fibrinogen is likely. We'll begin with a review of the common pathway of coagulation. The tissue factor of factor 7a complex of the extrinsic pathway and the tenase complex, that is factors 9 and factor 8, of the intrinsic pathway converge upon the common pathway, whereby factor 10 is activated to 10a. Factor 10a's cofactor of factor 5a works with 10a to convert prothrombin, factor 2, to thrombin. Thrombin cleaves fibrinogen to fibrin. Fibrin monomers combine to form fibrin strands, which are cross-linked by factor 13 to form a strong fibrin clot. Our focus here is on the action of thrombin, converting fibrinogen to fibrin. This process is measured by both the thrombin time and the reptilase time. The thrombin time uses dilute human or bovine thrombin and is sensitive to, the heparin, to heparin and other direct thrombin inhibitors. The reptilase time uses the Bothrop snake venom, which resists inhibition by antithrombin and is unaffected by heparin and other direct thrombin inhibitors. The thrombin time is used to evaluate a prolonged PT and APTT, screen for fibrinogen disorder, hypofibrinogenemia or dysfibrinogenemia, and detect heparin in a sample. The thrombin time is prolonged with anticoagulants that inhibit thrombin, like unfractionated heparin and bivalerudin, and disorders of fibrinogen. Thus, the thrombin time is prolonged in conditions that predispose to hypofibrinogenemia, including disseminated intravascular coagulation and liver disease. The thrombin time is also prolonged in hypoalbuminemia and with any substance that interferes with fibrin polymerization including paraproteinemias that occur with multiple myeloma or amyloidosis. Thrombin time may also be prolonged in patients who develop antibodies after exposure to bovine thrombin. The reptilase time can be used to evaluate disorders of fibrinogen and detect heparin in the sample when used with the thrombin time. A prolonged reptilase time can be seen with hypofibrinogenemia, dysfibrinogenemia, and anything that interferes with fibrin polymerization, including paraproteinemias and fibrin degradation products. The reptilase time is typically used to help interpret a prolonged thrombin time. Thus, when the thrombin time is normal, the reptilase time will also be normal, include indicating that there is no inhibitor of thrombin, dysfibrinogenemia, or interference with fibrin polymerization. When the thrombin time is prolonged, but the reptilase time is normal, it indicates that heparin or other direct thrombin inhibitor is present. When both the thrombin and reptilase time are prolonged, it indicates that there is a disorder of fibrinogen, paraproteinemia, or fibrin degradation product present. In summary, both the thrombin and reptilase time measure the conversion of fibrinogen to fibrin. A prolonged thrombin time with normal reptilase time suggests heparin is present in the sample. When both the thrombin and reptilase times are prolonged, a disorder of fibrinogen is likely. Here ends our video on tests of secondary hemostasis for thrombin and reptilase times.